Well, it's pretty much halfway through 2013, so let's do a roundup of the distros I've reviewed so far this year. Since my last distro roundup, we've had new releases of Ubuntu 13.04, which gives us support for the UEFI Secure Boot BIOSes, which are found in Windows 8 systems, as well as plug and play support in the file manager for Android phones and tablets. The new stable release of Debian 7 Wheezy has come out, and there's a new release of Linux Mint as well as several other smaller distros which have been updated. All in all, so far this year I've reviewed 21 Linux distros. Now Ubuntu 13.04, which I'm using here, does seem pretty good. It's nice and glossy, it's a bit faster than it was before. However, there were issues with um, kernel panics on boot up, and this might be more affecting NVIDIA users. But it did affect certain other distros which are based on Ubuntu 13.04, such as Linux Mint, which affected quite badly on my system. I did find Lubuntu and Zorin weren't so bad. Another downside of Ubuntu 13.04, and again other distros based on it, is the shorter support time. I'm reducing the marks by about 10% just because of the shorter support time. It's not necessarily something I disagree with though. I've just got to take that into consideration with would I recommend this distro with a short support time versus a long term support release, which is uh, like the Ubuntu 1204, which is five years. At the bottom of the table, I've got Linux 4, a distro for the partially sighted. It seemed a good idea, but they missed a, quite a lot of obvious features, which only took me a few seconds to fix. So they could have done a whole lot better with that. Also at the end of the table was Ubuntu GNOME 1304. Another distro with a whole lot of issues with it, uh, especially uh, problems getting the drivers on. Linux Mint 15 Mate Edition was a bit better than the Cinnamon Edition. But again, there were still hardware issues and lengthy boot up times. Enough said on that. Disappointingly near the end of the table is Kubuntu. Again, another one with driver issues. There really was problems with uh, Ubuntu 13.04 but it could have been easily sorted had Canonical not messed around with the kernel so much. Snow Linux 4, Frosty, Cinnamon desktop with based on Ubuntu. Now surprisingly, this could have been absolutely equal to Linux Mint 15. However, it seems to run a whole lot better. They set up their system completely differently to Mint in that what they've gone and done is taken Ubuntu minimal ISO and chucked the Cinnamon desktop on top of it. So you still have access to the Ubuntu software center I can't believe that they've done much more than that, but either way, it seemed to run faster than Mint 15, there were no kernel panics, it installed a lot quicker. So if I was after a Cinnamon desktop, I would take Snow Linux 4 over Mint 15 any day. Zibuntu 1304, not a whole lot to say about that distro really, just a minor bug issue, but otherwise I still think it feels slower for a mid-weight distro than it really should do. On a more powerful system, Ubuntu will beat this any day. Ubuntu 13.04. I thought this could have been really good. Yes, I know it's a shorter support time now. Problems with uh, serious boot up errors, as I've already mentioned earlier. I had kernel panics on the boot up. Changing the kernel solved this straight away. I also found it was slower booting up on a rotational hard drive. But on a solid state, no, that's easily at pace with Ubuntu 12.04. Rebellion Synergy 1.5. Well, that was an interesting distro in that they were trying to be one of the cheapest distros offering commercial support. Overall, it did fairly well, other than the ridiculously slow boot up speed. But that probably doesn't matter for most people. If you're running it on a business, which I think was more the idea of this distro, you can probably leave the computers on all day. Debian 7 Wheezy, the LXDE edition. Now, because I review my distros in terms of being more for the ease of use and ease of getting software and features installed, but that wasn't the aim of the distro. The aim of it is to be absolutely rock solid, of which I'm sure this certainly is. Zorin OS 7 Ultimate Edition. Well this only just made it into the half yearly checkpoint for my review list. I love the variety of desktops in this distro in that you can easily change the desktop layout between the various Windows layouts, Mac OS 10, Unity and the old style GNOME. I only really had two criticisms on it, the lengthy boot up time and the fact that they're asking a fair bit of money for what is only a short support time of only 9 months. It wouldn't be so bad if they're going to let you have it you know, forever after, or at least several versions after for the 10 euros that they're charging. OpenSUSE 12.3 still remains my favourite styled KDE distro. 
Solid XK. Well, I was definitely surprised about this distro, other than a couple of fairly minor issues with the firewall and Samba. I couldn't really say anything bad about it. I do aim to review the KDE edition, so I do think that XFC edition was a bit basic. But that is one of the distros I will recommend to new users. And top of the list, do, 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 do. fanfare please! Oh actually no, not a fanfare, it's Lubuntu 1304. I cannot believe I'm saying that this is the best distro so far this year, with a score of 87%. I can't really praise Lubuntu so much. It's quick, yes, but it's dull and boring, and it probably isn't the most easiest distro to use. It really only got to the top by being fast and fairly bug free. <sighs> Something's going to have to be done about that. But that was a look through the distros I've reviewed so far this year. So thanks for watching. See you later.